Hello and welcome. I wanted to share with you two recent separate but related projects I just completed for my 2020 Hobie Tandem Island. The first and the more practical of the two is the bilge pump. Uh, along with the bilge pump, I also designed a backflow preventer of sorts to help with the efficiency of the bilge pump. But I think for most applications, it's not really necessary. I just did it because it was an intriguing project from an engineering standpoint and lots of fun to design and then make with a 3D printer. I recently did a video where I shared my attempts to better seal the leaking hatches on my TI. Here you can see how much water was getting in just by dumping five gallon buckets of water on the hatches. I was prompted to check and see where the leaks were coming from after I noticed a considerable amount of water in the hole after sailing in some pretty moderate conditions. Conditions that are typical of coastal sailing in Southern California. After doing some work to seal the hatches, I noticed some improvement, but based on some comments on various sites by other sailors, I decided to bite the bullet and install a bilge pump. I really didn't want to add a bilge pump due to the added complexity to the boat. Uh, and I do carry a hand pump as a backup, but I have to agree that it's really kind of impractical to try and hand pump when you're out at sea trying to single hand in rough conditions. So if I was going to do it, I had a few objectives for the project. First of all, I wanted to minimize the number of holes cut into the boat. I wanted something that used low power. I wanted to maximize the output of the bilge pump and maximize the efficiency. And I wanted the pump to be able to work automatically so I didn't have to think about it. But I also wanted to be able to have a manual override. So here's what I came up with for the bilge pump. As far as the pump itself, the only hole that was required was for the discharge outlet. Both of these components here are printed in ABS plastic on my 3D printer. The top part is designed to slide into the bottom ring of the rear hatch. The bottom part is simply a cup that sits over the top of the pump. I elected to use a 500 gallon per hour rule electronic sensing bilge pump. So the way I did it, the pump is held down by the cup, which is attached to a half-inch PVC pipe running through the top ring. Everything is just a friction fit. The PV pipe is slid down through the top ring until the pump is firmly on the bilge. Once placed, I cut the PVC pipe flush with the top ring assembly. The rural pump is an automatic pump, but without a float. What it does is every two and a half minutes, it'll turn on for a second to sense for water. If there's water, it pumps. If there's no water, it sits idle for another two and a half minutes. This is all done with a very low power draw. Plus, the pump can draw water down to about three eighths inches or less, which I think is pretty impressive. As far as discharge, I elected to discharge the pump just behind the rear hatch as shown here. Based on my observations while sitting out on the hakas, that part of the boat is rarely submerged. But even if it is, the pump is built with an internal backflow preventer. The nice thing about discharging at this location is I was able to use only 8 inches of 3 quarter inch discharge hose, so I have very little head loss. The real pump also includes a separate lead so that you can control the pump manually. To me that seems like a no-brainer. But I was also concerned that if I turned on the pump manually with a latching switch, I'd forget the pump was running and I'd burn it out. So I elected to use a Cole Hersey momentary pump switch because they're incredibly robust and designed for boats. Unfortunately, the switch is not only robust, but rather large, resulting in a fairly big hand control. What I did was I 3D printed a case in PETG to house the switch. I constructed the case to be waterproof, even though the Cole Hersey switch itself is also waterproof. But because I know the switch will get continuously sprayed with salt water, I wanted to make it as bulletproof as possible. I ran the lead wires for the switch through a strong rubber hose that helps to keep it water as waterproof as possible and make it more difficult to yank out. The switch lives in the pocket in front of the rear seat so I can access it while I'm out on the hakas. Power for the pump is supplied by a 10 amp hour, 12 volt lithium battery. The battery and fuse sit inside a waterproof hard case which I attach to the rear seat. The wires for the pump 
and the wires for the hand switch run through the Hobie supplied through hole cable plugs. So no holes had to be drilled for those. It was very convenient. Now the second part of this project was making a backflow preventer to help keep more of the water in the bilge while the boat bounces over the waves. This was also 3D printed and is designed to open when water flows past it and close when the boat dives, keeping more water at the pump. My backflow preventer sits near the rear hatch, just in front of the bilge pump. As with the bilge pump, the backflow preventer is held in by pressure from the mount and no holes were required. Now, I wanted to leave a little space between the flapper and the hole just to keep it from sticking if something were to get in the hole. My idea was really just to keep some of the water held back, not try to keep all of it back. So again, a half inch PVC was used as the struts for the preventer. Then another half inch section goes across the top to keep pressure against the hatch. As you can see in this video, it seems to work pretty well at keeping some of the water back. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had rough enough seas around here to really give it a good sea trial yet, uh, but hopefully we'll have that pretty soon. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Take care.